Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Flow Show. Nearly the weekend. We're nearly there. I can't wait. Uh, it feels like Friday today, anyway. And uh, so we just got the uh, Bank of England uh, financial stability report coming out. Bailey is due to speak, but it will all be about financial stability. So anything monetary policy wise is likely to be where their current stance is, not uh, what's happening in the future. Um, so just uh, keep your eyes on that. Morning, Kate. I'm going to leave you to cover Bailey, I think, for that one. Uh, good morning, Ryan. I uh, just uh, need to go and do something uh, right while he speaks. Um, I'm sorry about it, but I, I won't be able to cover uh, Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any, anyone, uh, anyone of our viewers want to cover Bailey? Um, you're welcome to it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the last thing you need on Thursday is uh, Mr. Andrew Bailey waffling on. Right, let's get into it. Um, we will swing by China as we often do. Another fix midpoint going higher by 22 pips to what 712.70 from 712.48. Continue to go higher. Um, dollar China still floating around. Had a little nosy into uh, 730 yesterday. Couldn't hold it. Still holding up uh, there. I'm still thinking that some of this might be a bit of a month end stuff, but uh, still going the right way for us longs. Um, China's Communist Party will hold their third plenum July 15th to 18th. Um, so that's a date for the diary when we get a load of waffle out about how what they're going to do uh, with policy, the economy and everything else in between. Um, over in Japan, we had a bit of data coming out uh, overnight, retail sales data from uh, the large retailers. Uh, retail sales for May up 1.7%, nice and healthy looking. Year on year up 4%. Um, the main, well, that's the large retailers, the main retail sales year on year up 3%, beating expectations. So again, we're seeing this bounce back uh, in the new quarter uh, compared to uh, the crap show that we saw in Q1. Again, something that uh, the BOJ and the rest will look through that early data and focus on what's coming now. So that all seems to be moving in the right direction. Um, super department store and supermarket sales uh, were also up 4.1% versus 2.7%. Uh, so it's say like looking good there. Um, the Japanese government issued its uh, monthly economic bulletin saying the economy is in moderate recovery, although it appears to be pausing recently. Um, overall, it maintained the same view, uh, and that view has been maintained for the last five months. Um, right, yesterday we had uh, Mr. Kanda up very late, uh, 10 o'clock Tokyo time. Um, he was uh, speaking, said he's seriously concerned about the recent rapid weakness in the yen and will take necessary action in excessive moves. Uh, said the recent yen moves are rapid. Uh, and also said, uh, believes the majority view is that yen weakness is viewed as a speculative move um, and that the current weakness of the yen is not justified. Um, so he's pretty much gone through uh, word bingo there in terms of uh, the DEFCON levels uh, on all of it. However, apparently he declined to call these current moves excessive. Um, I don't know if that was a translation thing, um, but that was a, a little bit of a step back, shall we say, in uh, all those comments. Um, we've had uh, Suzuki and uh, Hayashi from the government speaking as well. Uh, usual waffle, no real step up there in rhetoric. Um, and we've just had uh, the Deputy Governor of the BOJ, Uchida, saying that the weak yen is an upward factor for prices and they're closely monitoring those in conducting monetary policy. Um, now, yesterday when uh, Mr. Kanda spoke, it's going to a short-term chart, we had that little wobble there. Um, it lasted about five minutes and then we went and busted new highs up towards 161. Um, so... Comments now falling on deaf ears. Um, I think we are well in intervention mode right now. Whether that gets the market a little bit more nervous, um, but we should expect perhaps to see some of these types of wobbles and that one we got uh, on Monday uh, out of nowhere. So just be careful if you are long yen pairs. Um, 
you know, it only takes us a little bit of nervousness, someone to hit a button and uh, you get a bit of a cascade. And we also might get bait checks and potential intervention as well. So we're playing that game again, all over again. Um, Kay, your thoughts, mate? Well, um, I think Kanda, um, yeah, he filled up the bingo card. Uh, and then uh, I dropped uh, the card for some reason. I don't know why. Um, and, and, and all my buttons fell off it. <laughs> but um, yeah, we are. We are definitely uh, in, in intervention risk. But then are they? Are they going? Or are they going to do a, some uh, PC kind of thing tomorrow. We also have the Tokyo CPI out tomorrow, uh, but uh, we're still in this mode. Um, how many times have we said that? It's it's just uh, very little use to, to stand in front of it for as, for as long as it goes. Of course, you can, can go along the end, but then you're, it's a pure bet on interventions right now because we are um, still a month away from the next uh, Bank, of, uh, Bank of Japan meeting. Um, I'm just repeating what I said. I mean, I I expect speculative spe speculative uh, um, on the other on the other side. Speculators to go to the other side in in into the next Bank of Japan, but uh, they're still a month away. So unless we get interventions, uh, if you're uh, if you're long yen, it uh, it hurts a bit. Uh, yen crosses are still pushing on. Uh, Euro yen back uh, comfortably above 171. Uh, sterling yen is uh, is even uh, is even higher too. Um, oh, oh yeah, there it is. Uh, two or three already. Um, yeah, I, it, in, and the problem is if you don't have the position, it's too high to to enter and uh, and it's too dangerous to stand in front unless you have deep pockets and take. Uh, uh, very tiny positions, uh, hoping that they that they intervene uh, soon. Um, could be one for tomorrow. Now we have to uh, we have to remind ourselves though that we could have uh, and and uh, conditionally, okay, we could have a little bit of uh, activity for um, their first quarter end um, over the over their last fixing tomorrow. So um, whether it's the exporters or um, importers needing to press some buttons still um so be careful what's happening in the, the next night in uh on the tokyo fixing because that will be just after that uh, um, tokyo uh, inflation release so um um be a bit careful for could could be a bit of a wobbly night there and then uh of course we will have the last fixing of the <laughs> of the month quarter and half year elsewhere which which also could see a bit of uh um, dollar flows coming in, so make make it a little uh, because for the time being, if if you look at really take away those blips that we have um, um, rate checking or or warnings, it's been extremely uh, it's been ex very very gradual and and thorough um, weakness uh, of uh, of the yen. So um, yeah, tomorrow could be uh, could be a bit different. Yeah, do do you think they'll take the end of month into account? Because also they might ever. Half an idea what their corporates might be getting up to. If the corporates say, uh, "Yeah, don't worry about it at the moment because we're doing all right, rebalancing well, or, or bringing back profits," mm -hmm. might they wait till after the uh, the turn of the month? Well, uh, they they will know uh, what they have to do because uh, everybody keeps them informed. Um, it's Japan, yeah. uh, but uh, if long they, long they long know, no real excessive moves, obviously. No, but um, there used to be uh, there used to be a time back in the old days where uh, uh, if they knew that the the importers uh, had a lot to do, they would uh, send out a few uh, a few submarines and keep dollar yen a bit low uh, to to give them liquidity. Or if the or if the exporters needed to sell, keep it a bit high. Especially in those days, the exporters, uh, because dollar yen was gradually going down all the time. Uh, keep keep it a little bit uh, high. Uh, Buy some ETFs, buy some Nikkei as well to underpin it uh, for as long as they uh, they needed to do their stuff. But it does seem that they moved away from this, and uh, looks like they're just letting them letting them do. Um, well, no, I, no, no, because I, I don't I don't think they 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 are there because it's just so gradual and uh, and. Mm, no, I, I I don't think they're involved right now. I and I'm, I'm just. Taking the bet that they are not that they they are letting the market do. Yeah, 
So, uh, yeah, we're on price watch. You know, if we see uh, 161 is trading today or higher, um, you know, the, the higher and faster it goes, mm. the closer we get to intervention. And that's yeah. that's the way you got to view this uh, at the moment. And yeah. uh, I'm still potentially interested in, in buying a, an intervention dip. Yeah. Um, the only the only risk is that obviously they they do that would be a real pissing into the wind move by them given where the economy's at where the BOJ's at and we're still climbing higher. Um, so there is some risk that they may change tack, do something different, go a bit bigger, maybe go over a few sessions rather than just one hit and sit back. So there's lots of risks around it, mm. but uh, I've got a bit of an itch to to get on the dip. But then I suppose. A lot of people were looking at that as well. Um, I trust so. The uh, yeah, for the time being, as you say, they're still pissing against the wind. Um, I, I, I'm just furious about uh, the global dollar move uh, um, in, for for next month. But um, we can always do crosses if you want to uh, if you want to counter something uh, like one of the Aussie or the Kiwi or something uh, who, who are. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, interesting for uh, Mrs. Watanabe, sons and uh, nephews. Um, if you want to steer away from uh, from from the dollar side or so, but yeah, for the time being, it is it is the case. And then, but I would say, time may if 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 you buy it, and and I may do it as well. You know, then we have to look at it um, time wise. I, I would say like second half of of July, unless we get some serious seriously diverging us data in the meantime in, in one or the other direction but i think yeah. time wise i think second half of july we 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 may need to be a bit cautious because there is not really a, a, a for me a serious potential that we that we are going to get a double whammy on the on the bank of japan in july like that is high rates and reduce the bond buying yeah yeah and that's that's they've touted that it's uh, going to be bigger than uh many people expect that when they cut their bond buying um and no doubt we'll get uh various sources pieces either backing that up or not uh, closer to the time so yeah, yeah. If, you, if you are looking to buy an intervention dip be prepared that uh as Kay says second week of july or two weeks before the meeting you know things might change actually for the uh the, i think the first the first meeting is 11th of july Regarding the bond, uh, the bond uh, yeah. program. So the first meeting with market participants is 11th or 12th of, uh, of July. Yeah, cool, mate. Thank you. Uh, right, let's move on uh, to Australia and uh, more bad news for the RBA. We had some uh, consumer inflation expectations, which jumped as well, up to 4.4% versus 4.1% previously. So it's all... Uh, the Australian press, some of the Australian press are uh, saying that uh, they need to hike again in August. Um, so the pressure is coming onto those guys over there, which may keep the Aussie bid a touch. Um, over at the Ricks Bank, uh, they kept their policy rate unchanged at 3.75% as expected. Um, there may be a little dovish tilt they said the policy rate can be cut two or three times in the second half of the year um correct me if i'm wrong Kate, but i thought they were just pumping twice uh in their prior meetings and now it's two or three is that oh, sorry uh, on the what on the ricks bank i thought their, their prior guidance was that they may cut twice in the second half of the year now it's two or three times yeah 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 um it, yeah it was a bit of um uh the report was was like I would say get ready because we are going to cut. And uh, yeah, the, the, the <coughs> whether it's two or three times, and we see we saw the the, the forecast for inflation have been revised a bit lower, but then counter countered uh, with with a slightly higher GDP uh, forecast. Um, yeah, I uh, and, and yeah, it, it's a it's a mildly dovish one, but uh, still cautious. Um, it's certainly. You know, if you compare to all the rest um, of the central banks, it's one of the more dovish out there, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Very much in so. general, we like. Had, yeah, we had a, a little bit of reaction mm -hmm. uh, over that. Uh, obviously, on the uh, more dovish side, not a huge move. But, uh, yeah, again, just plan the calendar, but uh, plan the amount of hikes uh, this year for the Riksbank. Moving on to the clowns at the ECB. 
Uh, ECB's Ren says he always knew inflation would be a bumpy road. It's a shame they didn't know uh, inflation was going to kick them up the arse uh, a couple of years ago, but uh, they're all experts now, of course. ECB's Pancetta said we're at a turning point in the European monetary policy cycle. Um, the ECB should avoid even casual forward guidance on the timing of rate moves. Uh, ECB's Casimir sticks two fingers up at uh, those comments, saying we should await the September outlook to decide on rates and we can expect one more cut this year. Uh, ECB's Kazakh says no need to rush with monetary easing. We will take cuts step by step. Um, over at the SMB, we know who the new bod is going to be. Martin Schlegel is becoming the new chief. Um, Antoine Martin will be vice chairman. And uh, Petra Shudin, if I get that right, uh, who was previously an alternate member of the governing board, will join as a governing board member. Um, Schlegel was out with an initial comment um, after that announcement, uh, stressing the commitment to the price stability goal for the SMB. Um, not really giving much away there, but uh, do you know anything about this, uh, this bloke, Kay? The second one, the second and third, no. Schlegel is, is a continuation um, play, I think. Um, yeah. He's, he's been there with, uh, with Jordan all the time, or most of the time. Um, so that's a continuation play. Um so I know I'm not expecting anything uh, specific from him now. The the other ones I don't know them. I I don't I don't know whether they were. I, I haven't looked it up whether they were at the SMB already for a long time or or, or have plant, been planted there to keep it to keep an eye on Schlegel perhaps and when when how when uh, or, or hide his buttons if he wants to press them. Um, I'm I'm not sure. Um, but it it did have just a very very tiny reaction. Nothing at all. Uh, really, yeah. five peeps or so. Um, so that's that's really the continuation play. Um, yeah. So from from that side, nothing new uh, really now. What I would say though um, on the Swissy is that over the past like several really months, several months, we have seen um, Swiss demand every every month end, and by now it started already to mildly show up um, several months and right now it's staying very quiet so perhaps there is little to do on the swiss side it can of course they can of course wait for the last day and we see a sharp move tomorrow but where it was possible that uh, we saw some uh, some swiss buying again uh, because if you look at the uh, the differentials on the uh, on the equity markets um the SMI is, is, is still very much um, underperforming uh, stuff like uh, the S&P and things. Um, it, it seems to either wait for the last minute or, or show up a lot less than, than prior months. So that is one of the findings that I had on the, on the Swissy uh, this month. Uh, but S&P, no, moving on and, and we, wait, uh, we wait what Schlegel will, will say, uh, perhaps on the handover with, with Jordan. Yeah, which uh, will be in September, so we may not get too many remarks uh, from him before then. Right, looking at uh, a bit of data yesterday, we're looking at uh, some of the housing data that uh, came out. Um, MBA mortgage saw another dip in the mortgage rate there, uh, which should be helpful for homeowners, obviously. Um, building permits got revised higher um, to minus 2.8%, got revised up. 13,000, uh, uh, so less crappy than it was initially. Still a negative number, though, over the prior month. Uh, new home sales dipped as well. Bit of a funky one because it was expected at 636, dropped to 619. However, the prior month was revised up quite a chunk uh, to 698. So that was good because it was revised up, but it just makes this month's drop even worse. Um, so a bit of a mixed picture there. Overall, it's uh, a soft number, uh, whichever way you look at it. So we're just uh, now starting to see something from the consumer side, shall we call it, the sale side, uh, looking a bit weaker as well. Um, over in Mexico, uh, the incoming president, uh, Scheinbaum, uh, said that deep fiscal reform is needed to guarantee resources um, needed for spending. Um, now, here's a comment you could uh, read a couple of ways. 
says there won't be a fiscal reform that translates into higher taxi, taxes for Mexicans. Um, one could, as I say, read between the lines and uh, infer that that means that uh, there might be higher taxes for Mexicans, but there might be higher taxes for non-Mexicans. But uh, I might just be doing two plus two equals five. But uh, still, there are going to be some reforms coming. Um, Germany has asked its uh, citizens, its uh, nationals, to leave Lebanon immediately. That comment was out yesterday afternoon. Uh, there is chatter that uh, once Israel are finished with uh, Hamas uh, in Gaza, they're going to uh, take on Hezbollah in Lebanon. So that could uh, have a bit of an impact on uh, oil markets um, just by proxy, um, even though it's still a bit contained over there. But uh, that potentially widens the conflict up, uh, you get Iran involved and all that sort of stuff going on. So just watch uh, risk on those headlines um france um they're talking about uh, the possibility of a unity government over there something coming up uh, with this left wing lot uh, going on to try and uh, take on these elections that are coming sunday um doesn't really matter at this point um we're just gonna have to wait to see what happens sunday now but uh, that's what's been talked about over there unity governments being formed by some of the parties uh, and that's it on the news front, uh, as far as I can see. Uh, unless uh, K Man, you got anything else to add? Um, no, I think uh, you covered most of it. Uh, the, the, the rest is more like a lot of uh, a lot of uh, opinion pieces and stuff. Uh, we we're still waiting for the announcement, the, the firm announcement of the South African uh, government, the, the, the real composition. I, I think the market is really waiting. Uh, and, and we have a great update uh, by Jeff, uh, who, who is living in South Africa in our in our room, by the way, for those who are not in our room. Uh, that is one of the, the big advantages of being in our community is that we have people from all around the all around the globe and people having boots on the ground when when something is happening politically or otherwise in uh, in, in one or the other country. So. Um, yeah, as, as, as Jeff said, the market is really um, eyeing on which um, posts in, in the government the DA will get specifically. Uh, that could be the, the move the needle between positive and, uh, and um, negativity in the, uh, uh, on, on, the, on the rand, right? So uh, thanks, Jeff, for that. And um, yeah, that, that is what we are still uh, waiting for now. Um, Ramaphosa wants to press it through the uh, he, he kind of... Put uh, a bit of a, a bit of a deadline uh, and, and a bit of a fixed uh, uh, government uh, proposal in, uh, but uh, so far I haven't seen the results of it. But that can drop any time. Um, in real news, that's about it. Um, we are looking. Uh, we are very much not looking uh, forward to the uh, Biden-Trump debate tonight. I am. I'm looking right. forward to it. For me, <laughs> To me, it's a debate. Uh, it's a debate um, of losers on both ends, um, because it's uh, it's it's very hard to um, to give too much credit to um, to either of them. But that's uh, not trying to be politic, but just uh, looking at uh, <clears throat> who the people are and uh, and uh, their state of uh, health and uh, other. Um, how shall I say, uh, uh, convictions and things, you know. But, yeah, uh, yeah I, I'm, I'm not sure whether, whether it's going to be a big market mover. Algos will be all over it, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether uh, at the end of the at the end of the debate, uh, whether the market is really going to um, to to to, uh, to listen to it. Um, Angela, I think, is it seven or eight o'clock for us, Ryan? Uh no, it's nine o'clock Eastern nine time, nine p.m. Eastern time. So that's about two o'clock in the morning for us oh, in the UK. Is it? Yeah. Oh wow! I'm going to have to watch the replay. I'm not getting up at two o'clock to watch it, but I'm, I'm interested only, in it for comedy value. Yeah, the only ones I'm getting up for is Bank of Japan at the, at that time of the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I'll have to watch it on uh, first thing in the morning. Yeah, and then me cornflakes. Yeah, and Ali, regarding your dollar yen, I think it's uh, seventy five, fifty seven, fifty eight. If I if I, I I looked at the charts, but then I'm out, out of um, memory as well. Uh, I, when I was trading the, the the dollar yen at that time in Tokyo, it's uh, it's around there. Give and yeah, take seventy five, sixty or so. 
Yeah. And uh, just while we're on that, well, same number, 75, 53. I think that might be close to the lows for the uh, Bank of Japan uh, uh, yen weighted index thing they look at. Uh, keep an eye on that. It's uh, down at 75.53. I think that might be a new low or might be called a 75.40 number. Mm. Um, but that's something that they keep an eye on uh, as well. And uh, yeah, just go back to what Kay was saying about the chat room. It's it's fantastic when you get people. We have people from all around the world in our chat room. Um, and if you're trading these markets, there's nothing better than uh, getting that boots on the ground information because um, it you get this stuff quicker than what you'll see in the wires and in the news. Um, and it does help make decisions for trading. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Jeff, if you're watching the show. Uh, thanks for that. And if you're not watching the show, why not? Uh, I'll have to ask him in the room if he's not watching because he won't hear me then, will he? Right, moving on. Um, today we've got final uh, Q1 GDP from the US, which is going to be really old news um, unless there's a massive variation in the number uh, here um, as we mentioned in we're just about to close off q2 so no one really cares much about q1 uh, data anymore uh, we do get durable goods coming through though so that's a bit of data uh, that we might see a bit of swinging around on uh, so we will keep an eye on those numbers at the very least and obviously jobless claims uh, later on as well um, and we get uh, some more home sales numbers from pending home sales uh, and uh, some wholesale inventories um, and retail inventories. Keep an eye on those because they do play into the GDP numbers. Um, and as they're coming in for May, they may be a bit of an indicator into the Q2 numbers. Um, so if there's negative inventories, that's a potential drag on growth, um, which will mean that uh, maybe Q1 is not going to be, oh, sorry, maybe Q2 may not be or may not see the bounce some might be expecting. So that's all on the data front. So let's have a look. Well, let's start with the old uh, RAND, uh, seeing as a few of us uh, trading at the moment. Um, still going the right way. Again, don't know how much of this is in the month stuff, how much of this is down to the politics. Uh, we're still expecting to hear all those cabinet positions and who's got what job and how good they are. Again, I had no idea about all the people who are running for this stuff. So that's where uh, the views of people who live there um, can tell us, yeah, this guy's good, this guy's bad, so on and so forth. Uh, in the meantime, we're still, my still main level up here is 1850, but at the slicer that is on, uh, we've hit this uh, minor level 1840s at a little look and come back down. Um, holding the 1810, let's put it into a bit of a short term one. Here we go. Holding above this 1810 um, is proving to be working well. Once again, had a little bit of a wishy-washy time, but uh, now we're finding it as support again. That's what you want to see when the levels are breaking. You want to see them holding either as support or as resistance. So 1825s, 28s, that sort of level is where we want to see the price holding just to keep this momentum going. And then uh, maybe we get to move further up. Um, Kiwi is another one I'm in at the moment. Um, oh, we're breaking into 61s. That's good. I was long yesterday. I wasn't liking this move. I actually had my stops just below the fib at 6070. And I decided yesterday afternoon to just pull them out the way down to 6050 because uh, I thought we'd get in a bit of noise around the fix. Um, that proved to be a wise move. Well, touch wood. So far, it's proved to be a wise move because I would have been ticked out overnight on my stop had it stayed where it was. And uh, then I would have been uh, banging my head on the wall watching it climb back up again. I added in to this level at 80 on the way back down. So, uh, yeah, getting back above 61 is a good start. Um, and I'll get the slicer on again uh, if we get up, uh, up towards this 61.30s again. And uh, maybe we'll see it creep higher for that. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, you guys have been a bit quiet. What's Ali up to? I know he's up to something. He's always up to something, that bloke. Um, Dolly Yen. Oh, you're, you're juggling with hand grenades today, Ali. Uh, long Dolly Yen, 160.58. Stop loss, 160.18. Uh, your profit, 160.88. 
yeah, it's you've got to know the dangers, Ellie. Um, at the moment, this one's moving, you know, pretty wildly. You've got to be careful when you're trading this. You know, if there's a sudden big move, a sudden bit of nervousness or a phone around, you might find a bit of a gap down and uh, then you might find your stop doesn't get hit at the level, but it gets hit at the first uh, price that trades. So be very careful, mate. Be very careful. Um, you also short uh, dollar Swissy. I'll let Cayman have a look at that one. I'll give him something to do. Um, what else are you doing? Uh, long on Euro Sterling, 84.35. Uh, yeah, that's doing all right at the moment. Um, I'm actually short a little bit of this um, at 61, 60, 61, if I remember rightly. Um, again, just on the back of some end of month stuff yesterday over the fix. And uh, I might look to sit in this one for that election weekend because um, I see there's more chances of uh, bad news coming for that than uh, good news. Uh, maybe we'll see a bit of a sell off in the euro late on Friday as people take risk off the table ahead of that. I'm not sure they're trading it just yet at the moment. Uh, right. What else? Stocks. Let's have a quick look at the old stockies. Where are we going? S&P not doing an awful lot at the moment. Um, it's mooching. It's, it's holding support where it needs to hold support. This was a resistance point and it's holding it as support. I keep banging on about this. Draw your lines. If you want to pick tops and bottoms, let the price action tell you what to do. So if you want to be try catching a knife, that's your pain level. You can catch a knife into uh, 54, 45, 50, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you're below there, then uh, you're potentially wrong and we're heading lower. Top side, 55 is still becoming or still is a bit of a resistance level um, after that fake out. So shorts, that's where you have some uh, conviction leaning into, but you don't need to be wrong by much above that high you know, we're likely to be carrying on. So, again, yeah, if you want to guess what the market's doing, be my guest. But I'd rather let the price action tell me where the levels are going to show up and treat them accordingly. These are all just short-term levels. So, you know, don't be expecting to sell 55s and it's going to go to 48 again. Um, you know, take it in context. If you get a move down, you know, to 54s, maybe down to 53.90, that's where you should be looking to take some money off the table. Um, don't be expecting big things from small price moves. Uh, uh, right, Kate. Yes, mate. Yeah, while, while keep it on there. Um, while while you're on there, um, there is a bit of uh, um, noise going in off model models go uh, doing the rounds, um, saying that there may be quite some big rebalancings to do between different equity markets worldwide, um, because. There have been some some uh, really decent distortions, um, especially of late with uh, with those European ones, of course. Um, but um, so if if you're trading uh, equities tomorrow, and I would even I would even look at bonds um, because we've seen this rally in the yields uh, yesterday, and I kind of suspect it may have to do as well with uh, end of month, end of quarter rebalancings, perhaps. So um, I, be, be, be a tad careful when, when you trade bonds and, uh, and equities tomorrow because it, it may look like something, uh, a, a driver for something, but it may just be like a pretty decent rebalancing. And uh, some, some of the, model, uh, the models are calling for third largest rebalancings uh, in history or so. So um, it's always the next um, biggest thing ever, like we have seen the... Um, the, what was it? The option expiry last week being a completely wet sprocket, uh, where it was supposed to be the largest one ever. But um, yeah. just keep an eye on it because we are end of quarter, uh, end of half year as well. Um, so it, it may just drive things around, and do not be surprised about moves. That's uh, that that's really what we need to uh, what we need to keep in mind going into tomorrow. Equity and bond markets uh, specifically, I would say. Yeah, thank you very much, mate. Um, last one I look at is cable. I, I nearly had a little nibble down here towards 126, um, but I've just don't know why. I'm just not uh, keen to get in too much at the moment. But uh, we had a little test close to it, and then we've had a little bounce. Um, still looking a bit weak. We've got a bit of a downtrend going on here at the moment over the last couple of weeks. 
um, that 127 level is now key. Um, so watch when he moves up towards that zone. Uh, if we can't get through there, that will keep this little downtrend intact and maybe we're going to head a bit lower after that. Um, but that cable's looking a bit interested, but uh, it's also looking a bit... Uh, despite us uh, saying it's been holding up pretty well, you know, very short term, it's uh, looking a bit on the weak side at the moment. Right, Mr. K, I'm mm -hmm. in it over... Okay, so uh, first one to look at today is gold. Um, it was looking very fragile yesterday. Um, and there again, the, these metals, they, they, there are fixings there, but no, nobody ever knows what, what exactly is going to happen. But I do think that yesterday and the day before, we had a bit of, we may have seen a bit of end of month. And then, of course, a reaction to higher yields. But we have to note that uh, it's a bit cold below 2300 again. So um, I'm not adding to anything. I'm I'm long, but my average is is still well. Actually, we're getting a bit closer now. Um, my average is 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 still a, a bit higher up. It's small. My risk is contained. Um, I was trying to look at getting a little push lower here yesterday into the 2280s where I was. Um, probably going to add. I didn't get it, um, but now it's like moving up again. Uh, this is one of the other ones that that we cannot rule out much in, in two end of month, end of quarter. But the fact that we uh, start to uh, start to move up a little bit despite higher yields is perhaps encouraging for um, those who rather look at the long side of uh, of this instrument. Um, but. I mean, we are still in uh, in in ranges, right? And uh, and we we saw lower highs. Indeed, those who look at technicals, we did see uh, lower highs into uh, into the, the the second part of this month. So um, um, yeah, be be a bit careful. But I keep a smallish in there and um, and see what happens over over end of month. And just to say, this is one. Um, that I'm going to be extremely interested in for the second half of this year, um, and I've, I've updated the the our chat room as well on that. It's um, it's one that I think could go for a walk again if if the U.S. data would start to uh, show a bit more weakness. Because as I already said on the shows, um, the dots are forcing the market to to reprice again. Um, the dots were perhaps not completely reflecting the the, the last uh, CPI number. We still have uh, Mrs. Yellen needing to fund a lot uh, of uh, of debt, but um, get a weaker employment data, and I think we may be a lot closer to Fed action than than what the market is forced to think right now. So this is one that I'm going to keep a very close eye on in in half two, if the 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 Jobs market is holding is holding up. I will need to revise my uh, my my whole plan, and that's what a plan is for. I mean, we have a checklist, so we we revise it from uh, from time to time. But this is one that I'm going to keep a very close eye on coming uh, coming second half of this um, of this year. Um, yeah, you were asking about the Swiss franc. Okay, I already said the. Um, what was happening in uh, in in the prior months? Okay, um, there is a bit of uh, there is a bit of resistance around around this uh, eighty nine ninety ish, um, but I think for me the the, the biggest level um, is still going to be ninety uh, uh, here that that ninety ten twenty twenty five on the dollar Swiss. If we get back above there, um, I think then then we are going to continue higher, but. Again, um, ahead of the the into month end, I, I I really don't know if we don't see too much action today into tomorrow morning or so. We should have the hint if if people need to buy Swiss. Um, it may just be that this one is 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 going to hang around here. Um, models are calling for a bit dollar selling, so you may be doing okay, Ali, Ali being short here. Um, that is what I have to say about the the Swissy right here and now. Um, then on the Swiss, yeah, the Aussie. So yesterday, um, as per plan, 
uh, I picked it up. I was hoping to get like 6630 or even six, low 66s into that uh, into that fixing uh, yesterday, but uh, we didn't get it. So I picked it up around uh, around fixing time. As usual, what I do when my positions are not meant to hold for longer or, or, or whatever, I've already started to slice just a little bit and uh, just to keep uh, my account happy and um, have like really um, contained risk. Uh, but I think into tomorrow, this is a candidate also looking at the equity the, uh, divergences that uh, is but has the potential to go and have a look uh, up at that uh, 67, 67, 10, 15, perhaps. Again, look at the range. We shouldn't be expecting too much here either. And if by any accident we break 65, 80, 85, uh, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be long anymore um, for this. Okay. Um, yeah, silver. I was trying to to pick it up in the, in the low uh, 28s, but for the time being, that is not really happening. Uh, what else? Um, did you show the dollar rent? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. yes, mate. Yeah. Yes, you did. Um, yeah, dollar CNH let a little a little tad go yesterday of my lungs just uh, to keep the bank happy as well. Um, and as I said, I had a bit of a zone here, small one in the, into the seven thirty ones. Also, looking at the latest move, it's always good to to bank a little bit. And with the perhaps end of month in uh, dollar uh, moves in uh, in mind, I just let a little bit go. If I get a little bit lower, I I will for sure uh, for sure buy it back there as well. Um, Looney, yeah, that one is that one is actually pretty uh pretty big. Um, Ryan picked it up really really well on the on the Canadian CPI. Um, one thirty seven. I, I would say though here, uh, one thirty seven oh five all the way up to or not all the way up oh five twenty. Relatively important. You could also uh, draw a trend line, but that's going to come in a little bit uh, higher. But I'd say one oh seven. Uh, um, 0520, that that's a level to uh, to monitor, and then uh, if it caps again, um, and and again with month and perhaps in in mind, um, a, a revisit of that 136 and a half possible, even low 136s are, are are possible as well. Uh, all depends on what's uh, going to happen in the next uh, 30 or so hours. Um, I had another one that I wanted to show, but I forgot about which one. Anyone having a Anything else? Oh, on the yeah, I did show the cable, did I? Or I didn't? No, picked it up yesterday as well. A few in the room did. Um, around this 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 prior low here, one hundred six twenties, had a bit of that uh, fixing move and uh, and and picked it up. Uh, okay, Michael, I picked it up there as well. I'm I'm looking, as Ryan says, don't 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 expect too much either. Uh, it, if if we get a move up into the one twenty sevens come uh, uh, tomorrow fixings, I'll I'll be a happy man. Uh, I'll be a happy man as well. And the risk is relatively clear, I'd say. If we start to get back below this this one twenty five ninety one twenty five eighty, it's it's perhaps uh, useless to uh, to keep it in the meantime. And let's see what uh, what happens there. Uh, the dollar mix is a bit of a bit of a strange one because. Um, I didn't see too much of a reason unless I missed some news for this uh, for this uh, pretty pretty steep move higher again. But we are watching again this this zone here, right? Every, anything between eighteen thirty five and eighteen and a half, uh, eighteen fifty two fifty three. That is where um, decision time probably for the for the shorter term uh, go go through it. Um, we we could be back at nineteen very very quickly. Cap it. Um, oh, by the way, hang on a bit. We have the Banksico today. Yep. Uh, good, uh, good call, Michael. We have Banksico today. That one. Uh, um, yeah, be careful because um, it it may be that due to the the, the recent weakness in uh, of of the Mexican peso, they they will be tempted to keep their. Um, to keep their uh, uh, interest rate unchanged, also with the the, the US being uh, on hold for longer, um, that that will keep their uh, their interest rate uh, unchanged. But look at what they say, okay? If if it's really due to Mex weakness, um, 
I, I, I wouldn't buy mix on the back of it because it's always dangerous when a central bank does something because of the, uh, specifically because of the currency. Okay, so watch watch the statement. All right. If it would cap, then we can go back to low uh, low 18s, perhaps above back to, to below 18. But uh, look at this zone here. If we would ever go back here, this is going to be an important one, in my opinion. Any Anywhere 1780s down to 1765, this is, to me, going to be one big support now, especially keeping those... Um, those those uh, politics in uh, in mind. Uh, we still don't know what Scheinbaum is really going or when she's going to to really press reforms through uh, with with AMLO, um, unless I missed something. But um, yeah, it's all going to be about politics and how the bank uh, Banksico is reacting to them actually uh, on the back of this uh, this Mexican peso move. And uh, Ryan, that's it for me. Back over to you, mate. Thanks, mate. What time is uh, Banksico? I'm just trying to find. Seven p.m. our time. Seven or eight p.m. our time. Eight p.m. our time. Yeah, it's not on. Seven p.m. GMT. Oh, there it is. Yeah, eight eight o'clock. Eight o'clock uh, BST. Yeah, unchanged at eleven percent expected. Yeah, so, I'm just yeah. Michael. I mean, if you're long, not sure if you want to hold it through Banksico. If you can slice it, why not? And and then you. If if they do something, uh, move, move the rates. Uh, also, you you're going to be laughing with the rest of your position if you can uh, if you can slice it. Or if you want to to err on the safe side, yeah, take take a piece off, and then uh, and then you will be uh, feeling a bit uh, feeling a bit safer, and you can withstand uh, a, an immediate move, perhaps if uh, if if they would uh, if they would impact things. But I mean, I'm I'm just saying what I would do. I mean. It's never, never, never investment advice what we give on all our shows, okay? Yeah, yeah, good advice indeed. If you've got some profit, you know, you can take, as you said, take some off. Bring your stop up to cover the, you know, let's say you cut half. Bring your stop up to cover the other half so it makes it maybe a zero trade or slightly in profit if you do get stopped. And then you know that uh, if the market goes against you, at least you pulled some money out of the pot. Um, and you, again, you never go broke doing that. Thank you very much, Kay. Uh, thank you very much, boys and girls. Uh, have a great day's trading, um, and uh, we shall see you all as we always do tomorrow, Friday, Beer Pips Day. Looking forward to it. Have a great day, everyone. Hey, traders. This is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.